Hello, my name is Kevin Danikowski, and this episode is on memory types. It's low yield, but working memory is distinct from short-term memory, although this distinction is a little bit cloudy. There is an overlap between tasks of each. Working memory is thought of to be the usage of short-term memory applied to complex tasks. For instance, working memory function increases with mental aptitude. However, short-term memory doesn't tend to correlate as well. But in all, the difference between the two is, to some degree, just a matter of semantics. So don't worry too much. Now let's discuss some of the different types of memory. Prospective memory involves remembering tasks you need to do in the future, such as buying eggs at the store. It sucks when prospective memory fails, like when you walk into your basement to do something, then forget what it was, then you have to run upstairs trying to remember, hopefully some cue will bring it up, and then go back down, hopefully you still remember it, etc. Another type is flashball memories. These are extremely vivid memories of an event that was really important, like watching the first space flight or remembering when Pokemon Go was released. That game was the most popular game in history in a matter of days, but whatever happened to it anyways. Memories may also have other characteristics, such as being evoked by the emotional, drug-related, or context-based states. Do you remember what terms we use for this? These are state-dependent memory or context-dependent memory. Interestingly, this is one scenario in which weed can actually be beneficial for your memory if you study high for your exams. Do you know anyone that uses photographic memory and whiz through the tests? I was so jealous of these people. But that's aside the point. What do you call these memories? You call them eidetic memories. They're a form of visual memory, aka iconic memory. However, Photographic memory isn't much supported by the literature. Lovely idea, though. Two ways of testing iconic memory come to mind, the whole and partial reports. Simply, an experiment was done having a couple of rows of random letters flash to participants. Then, participants were asked to recall either the whole thing or only part of it. Results revealed that participants usually keep in memory most, but not all, of their visual field. Iconic memory then only lasts an extremely short while. Should you receive multiple images in rapid succession, all of which have slight variations, you might even start to think the thing is moving, kind of like a flipbook. It's the appearance of motion, which is called the stroboscopic effect. You might see it occasionally called the wagon wheel effect. So what memory type must the stroboscopic effect rely on? Iconic memory, exactly! You can remember the stroboscopic effect by remembering a night that you were out dancing under a strobe light, getting glimpses of everyone's movements and like the, the high pressure and anxiety. Hopefully, though, you can forget about the anxiety and passing out and waking up in a hospital chair. D does that happen to everyone? Well, I'm not sure, but anyways. The last type of memory we should discuss in this episode is constructed memory. There have been lawsuits against psychiatrists and psychologists who probe and probe and probe and eventually pick up a memory of you being, let's say, abused in your childhood, which was supposedly repressed through the use of leading questions. But the question is, are these memories real? They may or may not be. And in times that people think they aren't, they can sue the psychologist. So they are constructed memories, constructed through leading questions. And that's it for this episode.